Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So before I kick off this video and the review of this book, uh, this is actually one of the books from my 100 books bucket list poster that's actually in the background here. I'm trying to read my way through all of the books. It's like one of those scratch off poster things. And at the end of this video, I'm going to be using a random number generator to generate two new books from this poster. And then both of those books will be up as a poll on my Instagram story. If you'd like to go over there and vote on what you'd like me to read next, that'll go up as soon as this video is posted. And then we'll of course remain up for 24 hours on Instagram. It'll be on a saved story on my profile itself if you want to see what was chosen, if you're watching this maybe after that voting period is over. Um, but yeah, so stay to the end of the video if you wanna see the two that I randomly pick from this poster that could be the possible next read on this list. This will actually be the first time that I'm choosing a book like that. I read Middlemarch as a part of Middlemarch Along. <laughs> Remember that? Remember when I said I was participating in that and then I actually did read the entire book in that month? What month was that? September? No. August? I think it was August. No, actually it was July, wasn't it? It's been so long because I think the last wrap up I did included Middlemarch and I haven't done a wrap up since July. It's been a bit. It is now October. Yep. And not even like early October. Anyways. <laughs> so what is it about Middlemarch? No, really, what is it? Because I've tried so hard to understand and it seems like, I don't know, am I just like missing something about this book? Is there something in these pages that just was totally lost on me because I didn't think it was that good. <laughs> okay, like, let me just preface this by saying, I'm not here to trash this book. Obviously it was a classic and it must've been for a reason. And I know it had a very large impact on literature as a whole, on satire, on all that good stuff. I get it, I understand. I'm not here to like, just be a jerk this whole video. So yeah, just know I'm just a normal person. I don't have a history degree. In fact, history was my least favorite subject in school. If you're looking for like a scholarly review of this book, this is not the place. I cannot stress to you how much this is not the place. <laughs> but you know, I think it's good to see a normal person's perspective on a classic because as a normal person, I would like to also see reviews on YouTube by other normal people about classics. Like it's very interesting to see how classics can have an impact today. And especially something that I've been learning while going through this 100 books bucket list, it's like, are these classics because they did something huge at the time or are they classics because they still remain to have insights about the world that we want to learn? Or is it really just insights about the period of time they were set in? Is that enough to make them a classic? And honestly, I don't know the answers to all those questions. I don't think I know the answers to any of those questions. I forgot what my questions were. <laughs> but I think that they do provide an interesting look into very specific moments in time. But should we today as normal people, as people that aren't, you know, studying literature in college, should we be finding lists like the one behind me and, and just reading all of them on it? Like, should we see this as number 36 on Penguin's must read classics list and say, yes, definitely, I need to read this ridiculously large book. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Let's just talk about the book. So I think there are really three things that resonated with me or three themes that resonated with me throughout this book. I'm only going to talk about them, even though there are tons of other themes, just because those are the ones that stuck out to me the most as a reader throughout the experience of reading this book. So the first one is idealism. Basically every character in this book has pretty idealistic thoughts that never really fully come to fruition. Dorothea is compared to St. Teresa almost immediately in the book, and it's her goal in life to really help people, but she doesn't quite get to do that on the scale that she wants to. Casabon writes and rewrites and rewrites and rewrites his work on mythology, but never gets it done. 
Ladislaw wants to become a poet or an artist, but he ends up being this like journalist slash politician. Lydgate wants to make these big discoveries, but then just winds up as a society doctor, and Rosamond wants to believe that Lydgate has tons of money because of some small thing that she overheard, which would therefore make him the perfect candidate for marriage because not only is he not from Middlemarch, but also he's rich. So each character, that's just a few of them but all the characters really have this idealistic version of what they want their life to be, whether it be who they're going to marry, whether it be what they're going to do for the world, what they're going to do as a job, or a combination of all three. And none of them really ever make it there. So it's largely about a book of characters that start off as very naive and wanting to believe that all these great amazing things can happen, but later have to kind of come to terms with the life that they actually live. And that maybe in trying to push so hard to achieve their idealistic versions of their lives right away, and and some of them are trying to like take these shortcuts, then maybe that's why they're never fully able to achieve what they want. Or maybe what they want was never really what they wanted in the first place, but they thought they wanted it until they got it. So I think that that was very clearly the main theme of the book, but really it's about society as a whole, and one of my favorite themes was that of hypocrisy. I think that this book did write hypocrisy very well, and there are some amazingly quotable moments that I really did love. One was, but very little achievement is required in order to pity another man's shortcomings. Throughout the book, you see characters judging other characters, whether it be a main character judging another main character, or you can even see the judgments of the town itself, of the nosy neighbors, of the main characters towards those people. Everybody constantly has something to say about everybody else. And it's funny because we've already kind of discussed how all of these characters in one way or another kind of fell short of their dreams, and yet here they are judging everybody else for those same things happening to them. It's just got a lot of that nice little sweet irony, and I think that those were the moments that I enjoyed reading the most. Another quote that kind of highlighted the hypocrisy that existed throughout the society was people were so ridiculous with their illusions, carrying their fool's caps unawares, thinking their own lies opaque while everybody else's were transparent, making themselves exceptions to everything, as if when all the world looked yellow under a lamp, they alone were rosy. I think that that is an absolutely fantastic quote as a takeaway from this book. And then lastly, the last theme would be that of living a performative life. So we talked about the characters all having these ideals and not making it, but that doesn't mean that they didn't pretend as if they had it all together and that everything they had in life was exactly what they wanted to have. Everything that they ever needed, they've got it all. Which is, as we know, not really the case. We know that they wanted more than this, but most of them are just trying to portray that they have achieved what they want, especially those that are older in the community, because they don't want to admit that they ever had dreams larger than those they achieved. Now, I think that this is something that we can definitely relate to, especially with social media. That is very much a performance. It is typically putting out your best self. And even if you're not just putting out the best parts, there's really no way to be entirely yourself self on social media. Nobody that ever sees any Instagram feed is going to know exactly the type of person that they would meet in real life. That's just kind of the nature of it. But I like the idea that that was such a huge part of this book that is both set and written during a time far, far before social media. I think there's like this notion that social media has turned us into humans that like need to look perfect all the time. And while I do think it does play an important part, it's not like this didn't exist in humanity prior to this moment in time. There's probably always been this need for human beings to look like they've got it all together and they've got it all figured out, and that they're living this great and wonderful life. It's just that now we can point to one spot and see all of the pictures showing up right there and say that this is the problem. But I think that it was something that was already innate and then was just magnified. But anyways. Uh, so I think that those three themes were really the ones that, well, I guess the first theme was just one that was very clearly apparent throughout the book, and I think that the other two were just ones that I particularly enjoyed about the book. 
overall, I still didn't love it. I think that a lot of people like this book more than I did, especially considering I did read this as a part of Middle March Along and there was a Discord for it, so I got to see other people's comments as they were reading it, and a lot of them would talk about these very funny moments throughout the book. And I think that, yes, it did have funny moments, but I don't think that any moment was particularly, like, hilarious. I think that the humor in moments may have been magnified because of the type of book you're reading. Like when you start reading a classic, you don't really go into it assuming that you're going to be laughing at any point, but there'll be a moment when a character will say something and it just feels unexpected. But because it happened during a classic where the writing is typically very dense, then it felt like even lightening things up a little bit was doing a lot. Now, do I think that this video would have made much more of an impact on me had I known the historical background and the political landscape of the time? Absolutely. <laughs> but sometimes with a classic, you kind of just take what you can get out of the themes that do hit home with you. And other than that, at least you can say, now I've read Middlemarch because that is quite an achievement. Hmm. I almost forgot. <laughs> we get to use the random number generator and pick what two books I might possibly read next from my books bucket list poster. So I've actually got all of the books in a little spreadsheet on my iPad here, and just so that I don't have to go and count all the boxes to figure out which one I picked from this list. <laughs> but basically I've just got them all in order, not including the ones I've already read just like going from left to right, top to bottom. Okay, so I have 76 books that I have not yet read on the poster, so I'm going to do a random number generator between one and 76. Okay, so I just typed it in and now I'm going to click generate. 15? 15. I don't know why I looked back there, like that was what I was going to use. All right, so our first option is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And then I'll do a random number generator, one through 75. Yeah. 67? Yes. Uh, so the two options are One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and To the Lighthouse. So yeah, those will be on a poll on my Instagram story for the 24 hours after this video comes out. So if you'd like to go vote on it, please do head on over there. And if you're watching this after 24 hours and you're curious to see which one won, then you can go to my Instagram profile and it'll be on the saved story. So you can check that out to see which one I will be reading and then of course doing a review much like this one. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, please do consider subscribing. I make a lot of videos very similar to this one, a lot about the books from the Booker 2020 long list, but also I am getting started on a series where I do this with books from around the world, starting in Chile. The two books I've chosen for that are on their way to me now, so I'm very excited about it because I announced that like almost a month ago now and I'm only just now getting into it, but can't wait. <laughs> um, uh, but yes, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye!